Hey, what's going on, good people? It's Gardner Douglas, your oyster ninja. I'm here with Miss Debbie Brady. And you are about to find out about her very, 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 very original art. Um, it's some art like you wouldn't think unless you're watching this on YouTube and you can see the art behind her. But uh, how's it going, Miss Brady? It's going really well. And I'm so glad that you contacted me. And I totally agree. If people get to see it on YouTube, it'll make a huge difference. Right. So, um, like you said, uh, uh, I think, did you contact me or did I contact you? Uh, Instagram has been a great way to connect with oyster lovers and art lovers. And uh, I actually started following you. It sounds bad on social media. <laughs> follow or stock or whatever but I was taking a trip to um I live on Prince Edward Island and I was taking a trip to the next province and I was loading podcasts on my iPad to listen because it's a three and a half hour drive one way and uh, I decided to check anything oysters and Oyster Ninja came up and I thought hello I can't believe this how would this happen and I didn't know about it so I loaded uh, a couple podcasts on and realized that uh, fellow Islander uh, Jason Woodside had been on about his shucking night so I started following him and following you and fortunately you checked out what I was doing and said you'd like to talk I like what I see. I like what I see is what was going through my mind. I was like, that's very original. And she listened to the podcast. That's like a double, a double whammy right there, you know? Um, so yeah, just uh, tell it, like, just go ahead and tell the listeners uh, what type of art you make, because I'm going to be honest. I don't, I don't actually know a name for it. I'm not an art guy. I love art. I like art. Um, but what style of art is that? It's, it's a uh, photographic fine art okay. and a lot of people say they think it looks like paintings but it's actually photography really really close up and you're seeing things hidden designs hidden in the oyster shell that you just don't see with your with your naked eye so i call it oyster art and as I said, being able to see some of the pictures that are behind me in my gallery here gives you some indication. Oysterart.ca is where the light bulb goes off for anybody wanting to, uh, to check it out. Because I try to make cold calls to people or at a mixer and I'm saying, describing what I do, photographing really up close and it sounds like I don't have a life. And, and uh, you know, their eyes glaze over and then I whip out my iPad and show them and yeah, they, they get it. So that's, um, that's basically it. And I can go on and on and say how I do it and whatnot. Well, that's great. At least we're in the right place for the podcast. I'm glad you can go on and on. Uh, I do have some questions though, like how, like, okay, first, did you do art before or how long have you been doing this? been really curious about things and I would experiment with different things. I tried woodworking, I tried macrame, knitting, um, painting and whatnot and I would do it until the mystery wore off and then um, I, I started out as a, as a nurse, okay? Third year of a four-year program, my third year I met somebody that not my I was already married. I met a, a person that was doing art. And I thought, oh, hang on, I'm in the wrong field. I had picked nursing because I liked science. So, but I finished my degree and then boom, 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 boom. That's boom, 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 four kids. And 20 years later, I had the opportunity to go back to school. So I went and did graphic design. I just knew it had something to do with art and not much else. But doing that and creating different ads and catalogs, I had to work with photographers. So I was um, photographing uh, the setup that I wanted them to take with the official camera. 
so they knew what I wanted. And then I just got more curious and nosy and learned how to use the camera. And once I was doing that, I thought, I want to see stuff up close. So I got a macro lens. When I bought it, it the, the man at the store said, what do, you, what do you want to photograph? I don't know. I just want to look at stuff up close. So uh, I was looking at coffee beans and feathers and seed pods and anything. And one day I brought home a oyster shell from the beach and I looked at it <clears throat> and I thought, oh my goodness, this is so exciting. I get good. Well, look, I'm even getting goosebumps now. It's, it's really, a, uh, I'm not sure if it's a good sign or a bad sign, but anyway, I saw these beautiful colors and, and, uh, I showed it to people and they said, uh-huh. <laughs> so <laughs> hey, am I the only one that likes this? This is so cool. So then I thought, I wonder if it matters where I found the shell as part of the story. And so I, I keep track of that. And then I thought, well, does it matter on the little spot that I photographed as part of the story? And I would post just the texture on Facebook and still no reaction. <laughs> and the photographer that I saw his work when I was in a gallery in Las Vegas, I started like checking him out on the internet. And I realized that his pictures were superimposed on walls, right? They weren't really in those rooms because then people could order whatever size they wanted. You don't have to have all that inventory because there's an infinite number of sizes that you can make. So I thought, hang on, I can do that. So I, I put them on, on the walls. People said, oh, that would look good over my fireplace. That would look good over my couch. Then it clicked. So um, yeah, that's, does that answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> no, it definitely does. Um, well, it didn't tell me how long you did it, but I can definitely tell that, you know, some years went by, uh, four kids later. And uh, no, that, 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 that does answer my question. What am I talking about? No, but it was three years of thinking about this, thinking, am I the only one that really, that's getting goosebumps over these images? Like, you know, textures, abstracts can be a hard sell. Mm -hmm. Once they went on uh, wall situations, then people say, oh, I would like to have that. And I'm thinking, okay, it, perseverance was good. Perfect. So, all right. So now you, you, you've uh, figured it out. You figure out how to sell it. And so what was next? So is it just, just finding those uh, seashells and finding the story behind it or... Um. Oh, I wish I could show you these four big boxes I have there from 34 different spots on Prince Edward Island alone. And I said, you can travel from one end of our province to the other in four hours. That I have them all cataloged and collected the shells. Wow. Um, driven around, got the Aquaculture Alliance map to know where oysters were being farmed. I've driven down some dirt roads and taken a, taken a picture from my dash and I posted it saying there's no water in sight because somehow I've gotten the wrong directions but discovered a lot of neat things. So um, yeah, I have the, the shells and I haven't looked at them, looked at them all, but when I bring them home, be it from a shore or from a restaurant that happens to serve oysters, I'll go in and say, where do you get your oysters from? Do you have any empty shells? So I take those two and uh, whatever I can get. And then I check them over. Um, so I have this puppy. So this goes out to five times magnification. So if I'm looking at something that one-to-one -one magnification. If I was looking at a, a coin, that coin would be the only thing that I'm seeing. Right. Nothing would be there. So then if I go closer and closer and closer, I'm seeing 
you know, a whisker or a beard, a whisker on some person posing on the coin. Uh, so I can get right, right, right in there. And, uh, and I say that because, you, well, you've been on my site and I've say, I, I've photographed a little section and some people think, oh, you photograph that whole shell and then you just blown the heck out of that little square. And no, it's just that little square that I'm, that I'm photographing. Right. Awesome. Mm. So what's your, what's your, what's your cleaning process like? Oh, it's very, very intricate. It involves a plastic tub with dish liquid and soaking the shells and then scrubbing them with a vegetable brush because if you leave any of the, of the oyster on it, uh, it'll come back to haunt you. Right, <laughs> right. Smell, and then I let them dry, and then I have a, a, a look at them. And what might look interesting with your eye, um, when you get the camera on it, it's not. And sometimes it's the most innocuous little spot, and you, and it, oh my goodness, that was that was hiding in there. And that's why I like to have really large prints because nature created that little pattern. And some people say. Oh, that looks like a, a galaxy, or that looks like a satellite view of the Earth. There, those are hiding in there, and yeah, they just deserve to be, be really, really big. That, yeah. That's that's kind of awesome that you would say something like that because if you really go back to like even just you know atoms and molecules, how they look like, you know, they could look like planets and solar systems, and you know, mm -hmm. just to you know kind of throw it out there but just it could be you know we, we don't know really well I I had a little um, um I had a little display somewhere and somebody um, visiting from the states this was last year looked at it and he said oh those are fractals and I'd never heard the word and I said is that math or is that science and he said a bit of both and that's what it has to do with nature um, creates in miniature simulations of what is in the universe. So nice. looking at something up close, and then the further you go away, you see that exact same pattern in mm -hmm. other things. And that's why you see a, a constellation, or yeah. So it's nature's pretty smart. No doubt, no doubt. Oysters hiding it, and and um, there's some a little um, publication here that writes about food. And they ended up doing a little article on oyster art because, and they said that when people are scoffing, uh, having a scoff of oysters, they never stop to really look at the shell and imagine what, you know, what's the beauty that's created in it. They're looking at eating, <laughs> eating the oyster and examining it. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. So, um, what what's what's next for the oyster art? What's next? Well, yeah. I'd like to. Well, I'd like to have a look at all those shells that I've got here and see because uh, I haven't covered some such, some places yet. Um, but uh, I would like to be doing oyster art created from oyster shells from islands around the world, and. The only hiccup is I don't think my accountant is going to let me claim traveling around the globe to islands around the world. So I need, I'm trying to get people that are on various islands or visited islands say while you're there, hello, eat an oyster, pack the shell in your suitcase and bring it back. Or you can pop them in an envelope as long as they don't have any meat on them. You can put those puppies in an envelope and stick them in the mail and call it a gift. And um, yeah, and, and I'd be happy. As long, but you have to write down what, where it was that you, that you got it. I think that would be one really cool thing. And the other thing is making oyster art, and it's, this is a tongue twister, an oyster art from shells shucked by winning shuckers. Right? So a trophy's nice, but after a while, if you're really good at shucker and you have all these plaques and trophies, wouldn't it be nice to have a piece of oyster art? Yeah, you something different. Ask, what is that trophy for? But if they see it on the wall, they might say, 
say, gee, what's that a picture of? Well, hey, that's a picture created from a shell that I shucked when I was competing at such and such. That would be really good. That is awesome. That, that, that sounds like a thing right there. Well, you would think, and, and Instagram is a great thing, but people don't know where you live on Instagram. So when I contact the, the Galway Festival and say, it's going on now. Would you collect some of those shells from the winning shocker? Right, right. What are you going to do with them? Well, I'm going to create, I'm going to photograph the heck out of them. I didn't get any shells. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Let's, maybe we gotta maybe we gotta work with the shuckers first. And then we yeah. can uh, reach out with the organi organizations. If the shuckers are behind you, you can do anything for sure. Well, see, I don't know the shuckers, but right. I mean, their phone number is listed for the organization. So if you know some shuckers or you're at a festival, I, that would be super. Well, hopefully we got some, uh, some of them listening to this podcast, hopefully. And hopefully maybe somebody from the organization. That would be great because there's lots of competitions and uh, I don't know if I mentioned, technically, I live on the Canadian Oyster Coast. It's officially called that. And we have in our village, we've had it for, I think, almost 50 years, maybe more. I'm terrible with dates. I can't remember my own age. We have the Oyster Festival and host the Canadian Oyster Shucking Competition every oh, wow. year. Okay. So even though I'm allergic to oysters, it's like it was serendipity to be photographing oysters. So it's like they called me rather than me finding them. And you don't eat any oysters? No, I don't. No shellfish. I love fish. Right. Shellfish, yeah, shellfish is not, wow. not a go. But I really love the shells, so that's got to make up for something. Well, I think yeah, you you're putting your uh you're putting your time in, so I guess we can uh, excuse that on the Oyster Ninja podcast. Yeah, and even if I'm at um at the uh, local um our local oyster venue here, and actually our mayor, he was um in the Guinness Book of Records on the team for a Canadian um, shucking competition. But when I'm at his place and people at the table are eating oysters and I'm thinking, what are you doing with that shell afterwards? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, that one was a good one. You know, I've got a baggie in my purse. <laughs> That's crazy. So um, hopefully we have, we have some listeners that will um, reach out to you and um, donate some oyster shells maybe uh you know if they're out at the raw bar if you guys are listening and you want to you want your uh you want your shell to be part of her art collection um we of course we're going to put the information in here uh in the description and also you know just write down where that oyster shell is from and uh put it in an envelope an envelope and we'll get your information yeah, and if they know the, um, you know, brands, some because there's a lot of different brands out there as well as the location. So, you know, Lucky Limes and Dukes and I hear uh, Fat Bastard. I heard you saying that one on a podcast. Oh, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of them, yep. <laughs> and, oh, I heard about the, it was called the um, the Michelin Star of Oysters. Uh, is it a Guillard? Guillard from, in France. It's, um, I have the spelling written down, but it's down in my office. It's, it's um, a pretty special oyster. I guess it's a big one. You not familiar with that one? I know. Uh, the only ones I really know from France is the uh, Belongs. Mm. With this big flat shell. It's like a, um, and it's, it's a couple of bar. It's a, uh, what is it? The, uh, harpoons, harpoons. Hartford, Harpoon, something. I, I forget. I, I've shucked so many daggone oysters. I can't keep up with them all. Uh, well, that's, that's, I have shucked an oyster. Uh oh. Yeah, I see you got your banjo oyster knife. Yeah, I have my banjo oyster knife here, and it is, and it is a good, a good thing to, to use and not a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, uh, hmm. So, 
for the good listeners, uh, if we don't, if you don't have anything else, where where can we find you in all that? Well, um, I have well, if Lester coming to Prince Edward Island, and nobody can with COVID in in place at the moment. But I have a website, uh, triple W of course, Oyster Art. Dot .ca not dot .com dot .ca oysterart.ca and it has my my work there and i have uh, have there are prints that I print umpteen of them i don't keep count there's ones that are limited which are only 10 prints will ever be printed regardless of size and then there's the pearls mm. Girls, only one print will be made and that'll be determined by the buyer and they get the oyster shell and they get it on display. Ooh, look at that. That's it's fancy. Part, part of the story. So yeah, that's the premium one. But but any any purchase though, anybody who gets I also I send a card that has a picture of the shell in the little spot that I photographed and hopefully the number of photographs I had to take at that one spot. Um, and I know something that's boringly, boringly interesting to me is that last week I did one where it was just a quarter inch spot of the shell. And because you're so close, in order to get all the little pieces in focus, I needed to take 72 photographs of that one little spot and then put all those little focus bits together. That takes a long time to do. Now, see, I never even thought about that. I thought it was just like point, snap, and you got a picture. So you have to take many pictures to get one picture. Right, because with your eye, you can look at, you can look, you could look at this first finger or you could look at this furthest finger that's the way that I'm showing you in a photograph is only going to have one in focus. So when, yeah, I have to take a lot of, a lot of pictures and I'm actually, the increments for the pictures is get this and I'm not a map person. And there's, there is a quiz, 0.3 of a millimeter, 0.3 millimeter for, and then I have to move it another 0.3 of a millimeter, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3 kept moving in to take all those 72 pictures. So Wow. Um, yeah. So how many points was it? Point three, point three, point three. Yeah, point three millimeter increments. Like when you take a pano shot of a landscape and you have to overlap the pictures and then put them together. Yeah. So I have to have them in little tiny increments and they have to overlap to get all the things in focus. So yeah, it's work but you really have to love it, and apparently I do. Right, so how long does a single, I thought we were done, but how long does a single uh, photo take between taking the shots and the editing and? Oh, I, hmm, I don't know if one could, could actually put a time frame on it, because also you have to add in the fact that I have to find the shelf, look at the shelf, determine if that's a good one, do some compositions and clean it and then get the composition set up and try their various different compositions and then then do all the multiple multiple shots and nothing can move in the house everything has to be turned up because it any kind of vibration it'll make the picture blurry so yeah and then I develop it digitally on, on the computer afterwards, and that takes hours. My computer sometimes says, what, are you serious? All those pictures? Yeah, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing, Gardner. Thanks so much for your time. Um, hopefully we can, we, can, uh, we can keep following you in uh, and follow your art journey. I have a request or a, a suggestion. Anybody okay. that's interested on my website, which was oysterart.ca, there's a tab up at the top on the far right that says receive exclusives. And if they click on that, I occasionally send out emails with a week preview of the new piece of art. So you get a week sneak peek and some behind the scenes, if I was out tonguing oysters or whatnot, and some oysters 101 about, you know, 
how oysters are grown and whatnot. And yeah, and then people that sign up for that get a, a digital piece of oyster art as a screensaver for their phone. Oh, nice, nice. I forgot to show you this. This is a fossilized oyster Ooh. from Argentina. And I looked it up and I think it's a couple million years old. But anyway, people not on the pod, on the YouTube have seen that. That is people, amazing. Okay, that's pretty cool. How'd you get hold of that? Uh, somebody heard about my artwork and has loaned them to me. They were working down in Argentina and uh, thought I might be interested. I wonder where they would have gotten that idea. So. <laughs> Yeah. That is humongous. Well, and heavy. Wow. Thanks so much for your time. And I hope everybody is uh, enjoying this episode. I really got a lot out of this one. Um, I like like uh, Miss Brady was saying, you can find her at oysterart.ca and yeah. um, send those shells. And hopefully we can get some oyster shells to you. And hopefully, I, I think, honestly, I think that... Uh, Doing the uh, winning oyster shucker shell is a great idea also. Oh, hey, I'd like to challenge you to say that three times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I got you next time. <laughs> okay, thank you so much.